Hello, hello there and welcome back to War Thunder. Today you get two battles in one video in the amazing German premium main battle tank, the Leopard A1 A1 L44, rank 6, battle rating 9.0 and it is equipped with a 120mm Rheinmetall 120mm L44 cannon. Ugh, that's a name. Now, it has a very potent AP FSTS, the DM13, with 393mm at 0 degrees angles of attack. With a positive normalization, you're looking at 227mm at 60 degrees angles of attack. And with 1650m per second, together with a very good magnification on the scope, it is easy to fire at targets at range. Also, you have some thermal imaging, but here I want to demonstrate some binocular shooting through a railway wagon that was derailed and I just killed here that way the XM1 but he's not the only one that will experience this as well as here the ASU-85 and yeah helicopters a lot of action artillery strikes capping killing etc etc another one with bino shooting if you have no idea what I'm doing here I am looking uh, through the binoculars uh, directly on my target with the crosshair and then aligning my gun with it, quickly switching to the gunner's view and pulling the trigger before the gun can do anything else. And that m when you have certain things, objects, where the AP FSDS goes through, this is a way to kill tanks. I killed just three tanks while being in cover more or less. They had no idea that I'm here, maybe with the radio antenna, but that's a different story. Now, the first battle is what you experience often at top tier, a close quarters uh, fight where there are a lot of buildings, a lot of cover, short uh, engagement ranges, and I am not really a fan of this, because as far as modern main battle tanks go, they can engage enemies at long range. However, it seems like I'm in the minority with this thinking and the community wants the quick short range action. Now, I have come a long time ago to the conclusion that maybe the community would accept large maps if they would be designed correctly. Because currently the majority of big maps where the distance from spawn to objectives and between the spawns is very large it just is the very same formula. If you look at Fulda, or Fulda Gap as it was formerly known, the old Kursk, or now Firing Arc, etc, etc, they all have the following formula. You spawn, and then you drive, and drive, and drive, and drive, and drive to the objective, till you end again in a short range brawl. So, if people then see those uh, same formulas without the long driving, they're obviously up for it much more. And obviously if you want to play match after match after match, because every match, individually speaking, gives more civil lines and RP individually than, you know, one long battle, you see that people really don't like those large maps. I like to do so, and I, you know, wanted to experience this with simulator battles. But simulator battles at this battle rating where I want to play this tank, Helicopters. Helicopters with the full um, ATGM equipment spawning right at the start. We had this quite a while ago in a realistic tank battles and I was absolutely not a fan of this. This is where the story and the legend of Napalm the Healy Hater began. Jokes aside, no, it's really terrible. Um, it's all Gachin's fault. They have this amazing concept of War Thunder, combined forces, and then the gameplay is so awful at times. But we're playing anyway, because there is no competitor, right? Um, I polled you guys, and um, yeah, the polls on my uh, YouTube account were quite, you know, refreshing in that aspect that sometimes I was surprised in a way what people think and sometimes it just confirmed what I think but this might be also biased because I keep on talking about this and so you know I acquire people that think um, in a similar way that I do or have the same opinion so if a few other youtubers would ask the very same questions maybe they would get a few different um, 
yeah, results in that aspect. So I always want you to participate in those polls whenever that I whenever I do this. But you know, I want to just I want you to memorize this battle. What happened? I went into battle and I had a lot of action. That was the spinal shooting, which is completely unrealistic, by the way, but it kind of works. It's a game mechanic. This is what you get most of the time, a short range um, engagement brawling city fight where a lot of the flavor of a nation's tank gets lost because then it's just APFSTS and stabilizer. That's it. And then also this happens. I see this guy and um, yeah, I was a little bit off with my aim. He waited for me. I popped smoke and I tried to run away. And this is one of those things. I respawned and I wanted to go to the front line, but people can hide everywhere. So they obviously tried to get to the spawn like the one tank that I killed as my sixth kill. And now I alarm my team. I tell them in chat guys there is a tank behind me it's probably a t72 i guess i turn off the engine i have no smoke left i again ping the map and they're right in front of me they're not reacting and the pulse is going up the pulse is going up atgm from a helicopter Some not so nice words in chat were exchanged after that. And I left. And then I got this map. The first time, and I'm not exaggerating, that I get this map in... Well, the last time I got it, it was a week ago. A week ago. I'm playing every day, multiple hours a day. And it was a week ago that I got this iteration of the map. Large or big Mosdog. And before that, it was, and I'm not exaggerating, I'm not kidding, half a year where I didn't get this map. Now, there are many things wrong with this map. The map layout, the positions of the spawn, the objectives, and how people play it. It could be so much better, and I was really lucky to survive this. But what follows now is what War Thunder can do. The magic, what people hope to experience whenever there is talking of a new modern mbt or ifv or some sort of tank destroyer with a big gun with nasty apf sds with amazing optics it doesn't really matter in a, in a, in a in a dogfight i'd say or a brawl but it matters on this map and this this is what so many tanks were designed to do just waiting behind the ridge line in a hull down position using their optics and to just creating crossfire engaging the enemy at long range and where you have some room to maneuver where you don't bump into tank racks and you have to maneuver vividly to get out of a certain scenario where there are no bushes, fences or trees that you have to run through early game, that you have to shoot through, that obscure your aim, that, you know, let you get killed because your gun was fixated on a pole while you tried to shoot in third person. No, no, this is a big, beautiful green map that is just amazing. And the engagement ranges are a bit further than three meters. And whatever happens now, I will be sad after this battle because I might have gotten more kills. I might have gotten a better result, but it's sure as hell going to take me a long time till I get this map again. I despise close quarters maps and certain maps are just outright not my thing let's put it that way and very often i just alt f4 and sadly you can ban only one map and by the way that only i think is possible with a premium account so that is kind of pay to enjoy war thunder a bit more or pay to suffer a bit less war thunder designed by felchin suffertainment comrade Sadly, that's not a joke. That is more reality than an exaggeration. 
but this I, I just can't believe my luck and I know that there will be a wild outrage in the comment section about how stupid this map is and how unfair and unbalanced it is yes yes you're right but I'd rather enjoy this than the next 50 games where I spawn and I just immediately have to shoot into the enemy spawn where <laughs> I spawn on top of a rock um, where it's a city fight and my stock heat defense is also really bad. Can you imagine having a tank that can engage the enemy over and over again um, with stock heat defense in the open? Now, I admit, it's not an ideal scenario for the American and Soviet forces, but to a certain degree, this is a re relatively realistic scenario um, where, you know, the Russians are in hordes there and get shot up. This is what the NATO kind of planned, what they designed their tanks according to. And also, if you are a British tanker, can you imagine here with your chieftain, with your challenger being hauled down at long range? Holy smokes! It would be so awesome. I would love to play the British tanks on this map. I would love it. Now, here's the thing. I absolutely understand if you don't agree with me here. I absolutely understand that you want the fast-paced action. But I hope that you can see my point. That I should get this map a bit more often than once or twice in six months. And that's not an exaggeration, that's my experience. If you have a different experience with this map rotation, oh, please, can we, can, can we just flip around the, the maps? You can have my city fight lineups getting the same maps two, three times in a row, getting multiple night matches in a row that I absolutely despise. I, I, I want to play this map more often. Not every single time, that kind of would ruin it. And surely as all hell, it should be redesigned. Hell, this map should be even larger. But there are not that many maps where you can use the terrain. And one thing, one more thing to end the discussion about the maps. It's a bad tendency of Gaijin that they kind of began before that but when they reworked maps such as for example old kursk before it was renamed to firing arc there was also a, a rework where they added a village to the middle of the map and everybody gets there and again we are in the same scenario where you just drive and drive and drive to end up in a short range brawl around buildings with a lot of bushes, trees, fences, all the obstacles in the way that annoy me to hell. Also, maybe even the performance of some PCs is better here um, rather than with the short range brawls. Just, just asking the question here. But the map looks beautiful. The map looks amazing. The graphics, the grass, everything is just so much more alive rather than this gray puddle of yeah concrete etc i know that the following two kills are stupid and again the map layout is horrible but the sheer size of it i mean it's not as if the city fights would be uh you know less unfair but here i'm sitting shaking because i'm enjoying this and and i just try to not screw it up to enjoy it a little bit and to have some footage to show you because I wanted to show you this I wanted to show you what I enjoy and I had a bit fair of difficulties over the last few you know days and weeks to play something where I think that you might enjoy it and I enjoy it as well because surely is all hell if I play a tank and I make a video about a good battle that I had but I'm still grinding because it cost me 400,000 RP to unlock a, a tank you know I have to play this tank a bit more often and I want to finish the grinds so you guys just don't watch 
the same tank getting featured in a row um, that often. And I'd rather make these days no video rather than making a video where I'm salty. No, this is, this is the content that I wanted to make in the past, where I had the hopes for. The difference to Wargaming's World of Tanks, I played World of Tanks before I played War Thunder Tanks. I played War Thunder before I began to play World of Tanks, because back in the days there were no tanks in War Thunder. And this was the dream scenario, shooting at long ranges, longer ranges than 400 meters in World of Tanks, and yet 400 meters, I guess, is the average combat distance in War Thunder these days. So, you know, that is the max render distance in World of Tanks, plus or minus 100 meters, plus stealth, blah, blah, blah. But in all honesty, that's the deal. And if you think, well, this battle was a bit lame and only four kills, yeah. Because that's the best that I could do in this battle, while having a good balance between early aggression, taking all the risk with driving through the open, to then profit from getting into a hull down position. I would love for the other side to have similar, you know, features on the map, to have also more cover, to have the ability to flank around. That 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 there might be three different engagement zones. A left flank, a right flank, and the battle in the center. I would love this. I would love this. But again, you can have this with Simulator where there are more open maps. But every time I played it, yeah, I got yoinked by a KF-50. You know, I had this in the past and I'm glad that I, that I um, have this not these days that often. And... I'm absolutely happy with the 50k SL and the 11.6k RP, but the more important thing is I had space to breathe. I could engage at my own will and I enjoyed it. It was fun and I'd rather play this rather than city fights. That's just my statement and I hope that you guys can understand my point i don't want you to force to agree to it but i hope that you understand my point of view and i'm so glad that i could join again this map now it's another six months of purely city fights getting the same maps over and over again suffering through night battles without night vision device enduring helicopter attacks yada 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 this was fun and that's it for me today so thanks for watching thanks for listening i hope you enjoyed this video please give it a like give it a subscribe if you want to see more let me know in the comment section what your point of view is and what you think about big maps and how it could be done better and we'll see each other on the waves in the skies and on the battlefields of war thunder mm -hmm.